Now we're going to talk about the speed of a wave on a string. So this one's interesting and applicable to musical instruments because that speed is going to depend on the tension in the string. The, as you tune a piano or a violin or a guitar, you're changing the tension in that string. And uh, with the changing tension comes a change in wave in, in, the, in, in the frequency that that string, a vibrating string, creates. And that frequency change comes about because the speed of the wave is changing. So we just have one concept in this section, and that's to relate the speed of the wave to its tension, mass, and length. A heavier string, uh, heavier uh, piano string at the same tension as a lighter string is going to give a lower sound. All right, speed wave. and uh, This is the speed of a wave on a string. And it is related to the tension, mass, and length in this relationship. The square root of the tension, which we're denoting by f, to avoid confusion with uh, period t. And that tension is measured in newtons. Then the mass of the piece of string that we're talking about, we just put it on a scale and figure out what its mass is. Uh, that's measured in kilograms. And then the length of the string measured in meters. And if you work out the units, you'll see that you got newtons here uh, divided by meter uh, mass in kilograms and meters in length. And then you take the square root. It's an easy exercise to show that the answer that you get out of this deal has to be measured in meters per second. Does this equation make sense? Well, yes, it does. Because if I increase the tension in the string, if I pull it more and increase the tension, then I might expect that wave to propagate faster down the string. And sure enough, if you increase the tension here and take the square root, since this is in the numerator, the speed will in fact increase. What if you increase the mass of the a string? You should think that that would ha that have the opposite effect. If you increase the mass of the, st uh, the string, that mass is in the denominator, and it will, increasing the mass will decrease the speed. And then what about the length of the string? Well, that's in the denominator of the denominator. So basically, I could have written this as V is the square root of FL over M. The only reason I didn't write it in this simple way is in a lot of problems, it's useful to think of this quantity being the mass per unit length. So, but you can think about it, about it this way uh, if you re rewrite the equation as we just did. If you increase the length, then um, the, you're going to increase the, the, the speed. And it's really the mass per unit length that matters, honestly. So this is probably the best way to think about it here. Um, so let's do some examples. Uh, this is a demonstration uh, using our uh, my handsome assistant, Parker. And what we'll be looking at is, is Parker and I are going to start out with, a str with very little uh, tension in, this, in the string. And then we're going to increase the tension and watch how the wave speed depends on that increase in tension. So here's a low tension wave, propagates fairly slowly. Increase the tension by um, pulling the string tighter, going faster and faster as you increase that tension. And at this tension, the, the wave speed is very, very fast. So that is variation with tension. Uh, here's an example of um, transverse waves uh, on guitar strings. So I'm just taking this equation that we that's in that concept. And so that's the equation we wrote down. 
square root of the tension, divided by the mass per unit length, and plugging in values that are pertinent to a, high, to a guitar. The very highest string, highest pitched string on the guitar is an E, and the very lowest pitched string on the guitar is a low E, two octaves below. So this is the high E, very thin, the thinnest um, diameter string on the guitar, and its wave speed is about 826 meters per second, as opposed to putting in a mass per unit length of the uh, low E, and its uh, speed is 207 meters per second. So slower wave speed for the thicker string, and that produces a lower sound. And we'll talk more about that, the lower pitch for that uh, low string. Okay, a climbing rope hangs from a ceiling in a gymnasium. So you can imagine having a, a rope that you attach to the ceiling and then it dangles out, and the other end isn't, isn't attached to anything. So how does the tension in that string in the rope vary as you proceed from the end all the way to the top? Well, the tension at the very, very end is zero because it's not holding up anything. But the tension at the top of the string is high because it's bearing all of the weight of the string below it. So as you proceed from the bottom to the top of this rope, you're going to increase the tension. Well, what does that do What does that do to the velocity? Well, the tension, so here's the, here's the rope hanging from the ceiling, and this is at a high tension. And down here at the end, it's at a low tension. Well, the, the speed is proportional to the square root of the tension. And so this speed at the top is going to be high. So a large velocity. And here at the bottom, it's going to be a small velocity. So what will happen when you jiggle the end of that uh, rope from the bottom, it'll, the, the, the wave will propagate slowly at the start and then speed up as it moves up the, uh, the string. So the speed decreases, increases as it moves upward. So this would be the answer here. Uh, wave speed versus particle speed. This is an important distinction to make. The wave speed that we've been talking about, square root of f over m over l, um, or whatever it is for a sound wave or other waves, is not related to the particle speed. So if you're thinking about moving a string up and down, causing those little um, parts of the slinky to move up and down, the velocity of the motion up and down is not related to the speed of the wave. Why? Because you can decrease the amplitude of the wave instead of moving it uh, really far back and forth. You're going to move just a little bit back and forth. Um, then those velocities are quite small back and forth, assuming you're going at the same speed, um, the same frequency with large amplitude as you are for small amplitude. But for the small amplitude, you're not moving as far. So it's not going to be traveling as, fa as fast. So those are... Uh, two separate concepts, the, the speed of the particles oscillating back and forth. And that's that section.